But the May local elections in 2023 are hugely important for the Green Party. And the reason for that is because the last time these seats were up for election was in 2019. Now, in 2019, the Green Party won more seats than it ever had done before. So prior to 2019, in a good election year, the Greens might gain a dozen seats. In 2019, they gained almost 200, doubling the party's representation in local government overnight. That's a huge shift that took place in that year. Now, that was followed in 2021 and 2022 with another series of massive gains in local elections. The reason why I say that 2023 is so important and so interesting for the Green Party is because the seats that are up for election were last contested in 2019, and that means that the Greens are now defending more seats than they ever have before. Not just more seats than they ever have before on a small scale, but actually the highest numbers of seats the Greens have previously defended in a single night. You're looking at a few dozen. This year in May, the Greens will be defending over 200. That's a huge challenge for the party because it's never had to do that before. Now, what's interesting is the Green Party isn't talking nationally about, oh, well, this is a particularly defensive year and therefore we're going to really struggle because, uh, you know, we've got lots of defences. So we, you know, we're expecting quite modest gains. Actually, if you listen to what the leadership are saying, if you listen to what people close to uh, who are involved nationally are saying, they're actually saying the Greens are on track for huge gains once again. Carla Denyer at Spring Conference last weekend said that the Greens uh, were looking to gain 100 more council seats. That's in addition to the more than 200 that they're already defending. So this would be absolutely huge if the Green Party was able to defend all of those 200, 200 and more seats that it's already held and gain an additional 100. It will be a massive uh, landmark moment for the party because it can demonstrate that not only can it win big as it did in 2019, not only can it defend big and keep hold of those seats, but also that it can make additional gains on top of that. So if, if you look at the history of local elections in the UK, there's been no other left party except the Green Party to the left of Labour that has been successful at winning local elections on this scale. But also, even parties that aren't on the left, that have had major success in local elections, the most obvious example being UKIP, they had a huge uh, breakthrough in 2013 in the local elections. However, when they came to defend those seats in 2017, it didn't go too well for them. And when he defended more seats in 2018, it didn't go too well for them then. And what you saw was when the election cycle came round, UKIP wasn't able to keep hold of those seats. And in fact, it faced almost entirely being wiped out to the extent where I think they only have maybe three councillors now when they had over 500 uh, before that. So if the Green Party were able to pull this off, it's historically significant for the Green Party in and of itself and for the representation it's able to deliver for people. But it's also really historically significant for British politics as well, because what it would mean is that there's a political party outside of the big three that's able to make substantial inroads into local government and secure those for the long term as well. Not only that, but this year it looks like from the noises we're getting from certain parts party local parties across the country that actually not only are we looking at the greens gaining massive amounts of seats across the country but also really starting to take power and office in local government so the green party as a lot of people will know has been in administration in brighton hove uh, for the last couple of years uh, it had previously been in administration before that but now it's back in administration it's also in joint administration in over a dozen councils across the country where the Greens are in coalition with other parties, with independents and so on. Um, and that's that's pretty impressive that the Greens have managed to, to pull that off. In this set of local elections, what we're looking at is there being more councils where the Greens could be the sole party in administration. So the most obvious one to look at is Mid-Suffolk. So in the last set of local elections in Mid-Suffolk in 2019, the Greens uh ended up on 12 seats 
They're now only a few seats shy of taking over as the largest party on that council. And if you speak to some people, there is energy and excitement about the prospect of the Greens not only becoming the largest party, but also having a majority on Mid-Suffolk Council. That is unprecedented. If in Mid-Suffolk, the Greens become the largest party, it will be the first place anywhere in the country where the Greens have had a majority on a local council. So in Brighton and Hove, the Greens uh, have run the administration there twice, but they never had a majority of seats. They were just the largest party. And so if you add up all the numbers of all the other councillors from all the other parties, they come to a higher total than the total of the Greens. In Mid-Suffolk, it's possible the Greens will become will have more seats than all the other parties combined. If that happens, that's his historically significant for the Green Party. It means there'll be a council where the Greens will be able to in implement their political programme, admittedly in a horrible position for uh, local government, where we're facing over a decade of austerity and cuts and squeezes on local government finances, but nonetheless an unprecedented moment and a really exciting point uh, if people are interested in local government and uh, politics more broadly. But also, you've got other councils across the country where the Greens could be going from one or two seats to double digits. You've got some councils where the Greens could be um, going from a position of opposition to being either the largest party or being in administration. We could be seeing more and more Greens taking office across the country. That's huge. And another area I think it's huge is in Brighton Hove, because whilst there was that first administration that was elected in 2011, that administration, when it was faced with the electorate again in 2015, lost a huge amount of its seats and lost power. The Greens are now in administration again in Brighton Hove. If they go into this election in administration and come out the other end, also in administration, still as the largest party, that would be the first time in history where a Green Party has gone into administration, uh, gone into an election, sorry, in administration, and ended up after that election still in administration. So there's a huge number of potentially massively historic moments on the horizon for the Greens, which really will tell a story about the state of local government, about British politics, and also the state of the Green Party. So if you'd ask me whether I think um, all that's gonna happen, I don't know the answer to that question. We will see in about six weeks time. But if you would have asked me what the significance of that is, <clears throat> if all those things happen, if the Greens gain 100 plus seats, if the Greens take majority control of Mid-Suffolk, if there's another bunch of councils they start taking administration in, if there's some councils where they go from two to you know a dozen seats overnight, if in Brighton and Hove they manage to go from administration to election to administration again, this is one of the most exciting set of elections for the Green Party. And it could be, could be a real watershed uh, in terms of, the party's electoral strength. So I'm fascinated by this set of elections. And that's why over the next six weeks, Bright Green is going to be dedicating a lot of time to looking at these elections. We're going to be producing a series of articles that analyzes what's going on in some of these places where there are real opportunities for the Greens to gain a huge number of seats, potentially also gain administration. We're also going to be on election night itself, running our annual um, traditional live blog where on our website, We'll be providing all the latest news analysis through the uh, from the elections throughout the whole of the night, throughout the following day and the day after as the results trickle in across the country. So you'll be able to catch all the interesting insights and information and news about green success or failure uh, in those elections and also what the elections mean for the wider left. And also uh, on that night, at about 2.30, 3 a.m. in the morning, when most of the results have come in overnight, we're going to be holding a live stream on our YouTube channel where we'll be delving, delving into some of the results in more detail, discussing it with some uh, figures from the Green Party. And we'll try and do a similar live stream towards the end of the day, uh, the day after polling day as well. Naturally, uh, on the next episode of Bright Green Live, April the 9th, we're going to be running some analysis in advance of those elections. And in the uh, the our edition of Bright Green Live on the second Sunday in May, we'll be, diver we'll be digesting all of that and much, much more of those local elections on there. So please do stay tuned all of that, because I think it's an incredibly exciting set of local elections. I think there's a huge um, uh, amount of interesting things that could happen and Brightburn will be covering it all the way.